All right, what is up guys? VV back with another video. And in today's video, guys, uh, we're gonna be talking about um, my most current iteration of black, yellow, Charlotte Linlin. Uh, at the time of me recording this video, it's OP05, of course, and I just got done with a tournament last night. Uh, I think it was just under 20 players where I got third place, went three and one, and my matchups are down there at the bottom right, and we're gonna go in each one of those into more detail in just a second here. Uh, but the list is performing very well. The black, yellow, Linlin is, it, it, it is solid, guys. Um, and let's just go ahead and dive straight into it. And I'll explain more as we go. So this was the matchups. It goes, um, you know, top left, bottom left, top right, bottom right for the order that I played. First up was Zoro. This was a newer player. But again, that's my best matchup is Zoro. Next one was Rosinante. Um, good, very good player. This was a very solid player. He's also a judge as well. He's, he's topped and won many of the local tournaments here in town. Um, solid deck, too. We're going to talk more about the deck, the specifics about it, as we get to that uh, to that slide where we... Where we I'm going to do a breakdown of each one of these matchups. Um, third, my, my third round, I lost to Sakazuki in a 45-minute game. Uh, an absolute grueling nail-biter of a game where there was probably one turn I should have attacked, and, and I'm, I'm beating myself up over it even now thinking about it, where I should have attacked. Um, but even still, choosing the safer route, quote-unquote, I still probably could have won if there was one adjustment made to my deck, which I'll talk about as we get to it. Uh, but very good game, extremely good player, a player who's won you know quite a few of the local tournaments, very competent, solid player. And last but not least, Enel. Um, by the way, the Sakazuki player, this was we were both two and zero. So when he went th uh, three and zero, he got second place. He lost to another Anel, not this Anel that I played, but a different Anel. So my, I really like my chances of winning the whole tournament if I could have got past Sakazuki. But we'll, we'll again, we'll talk more about that when we get to it. Last up was um, um, my fourth matchup was against an Anel, and I felt pretty comfortable. And it was against a very good player, again someone who's won quite a few of the local tournaments. He's also a judge. Both these players, the Rosinante and the um, the NL, very competent, years of uh, TCG experience, uh, judges, they win most of the locals. So these were very good representations of how the deck was performing. And uh, same idea with, with Saka, the Sakazuki player. He's not a judge, but has, has uh, topped and won many local tournaments. So um, first up is the, I'm not going to spend much time on the Zoro matchup. It is, a, it is a favorable matchup for us. Rely on your Borsalina to turn, to, he basically turns your leader into a 6k leader. He's un-KO-able. He's just an absolute nuisance. And then he can turn sideways later in the game to, to, to go for lethal. Uh, you got, you're going to want to take about one life every single turn. That, that, is, that is a good thing. Take exactly one life a turn. So that way you, you get him in the, in, it's almost like you're training your opponent to, to take one life off you each turn. But then when you get down to one life, number one, you probably got a trigger or two. We'll talk about triggers a little bit in a second. You, but you'll also turn on your leader effect. And that's a card I should have added to the bottom here. It was my leader for, like, these are, at the bottom here, these are, like, MVP cards in the matchup. Your leader just gets you there. Just constantly, you're gaining life every turn while swinging for seven, taking out his board. It's just massive. It's just huge while you sit behind these blockers like Borsalino, Sabo, and uh, Sanji. And you're going to want to play an attrition style against Zoro still. Uh, yes, the, the list can tempo out and go aggro, but against Zoro, you need to play smart because he is just more aggro than you will ever hope to be, <laughs> you know, in a black-yellow deck, obviously. Um, <clears throat> so play the attrition style, so that way your Gadatsu can, can pop anything in, on their board, anything. Uh, but very solid matchup for us, and this game was very good, very comfortable win, uh, even though it did come down to, like, one of the last attacks. For a newer player, too, like, like I said, Zoro is just a tough, a very, very tough um, opponent, but our, our deck does do very well into it. Uh, okay, next up was Rosinante. Uh, this was just an interesting matchup. You, I, in this matchup, you have to go smart tempo, quote-unquote, where basically you attack every single turn to elicit a response from them. Them Either A, they're going to take the life, which that's fine. B, they're going to counter out, lose a card from hand. Or C, you're going to eat up one of their characters, right? That That's the only options for what you're trying to do. So, so I say go smart with your tempo. And then once you've elicited one response from them, whatever it is, you can kind of sit back at least until turn four or five, right? And, and, and pass that, obviously. Tenlin is the MVP in this in this um, deck or against this this um, this leader because it gains your life. They lose a life even when they're hiding behind all these blockers. But they can deal with it. They can deal with it very easily with uh, Red Rock. And then last but not least, you need to not overextend. 
because they run this is the Don Quixote search engine and everything so they can run the 10 cost do flamingo and lock down your whole board do not ever 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 have more than two characters tap down so that way they can't get the full value out of their um their 10 cost dofi which will give you the opportunity to swing for lethal next turn you guys see the, the idea there so again 10 lin is like the big the boss in this one if, if they don't have enough um red rocks to deal with your 10 lin and that's a six dawn investment by the way that's going to be half their over half their turn if they don't have that then this 10 lin will just run them over you need to hide, like you need to use as many of your triggers as possible if you get a paro a sanji or a uh um, smoothie or cracker. We'll talk about the change. You can run smoothie or cracker here. It's fine. But whichever one you run, you need to use those triggers whenever you get them to keep your board wide enough so that you're going to eat up all of their answers. You're going to eat up all of their cards. You're going to just totally run away with it. You know what I mean? Uh, and then last but not least, uh, last but not least, uh, 200 million volts tomorrow is not incredible against this deck because they do run a, a lot of strong five cost characters like X Drake and, um, five cost blocker law but it's still pretty good it's still pretty decent it can move it, it, it can move the smaller blockers out of the way and gadatsu the reason you're like don't be afraid to attack early with your leader into into rosinante because your gadatsu's main target to attack with it or to ko in this deck is sugar sugar is priority number one it can tap down anything once it's in play so koing that early on getting it out of your way is a very big deal Okay, um, so that was it for that matchup. Pretty pretty interesting matchup, like I said, piloted by a good player. I, I do think we have a pretty favorable matchup into into almost anything green, unless it's like red-green, obviously. Then it gets out of control with law. Okay, next up is Sakazuki. I think our matchup against Sakazuki is close to 50-50. Maybe, maybe black-yellow is more like 45 and they're 55. But it is a very winnable game. And I will put up a, a match. You know, I, I got to record more uh, games I played. But... I'll put up a match of how to beat Sakazuki with Black, Yellow, Lin, Lin uh, in the future. So, um, early on, you want to starve them. Like, it's kind of like, don't swing until turn four. That's kind of the idea. Or turn three, if you get down your Gadatsu and get the value out of them, then you can attack. Early on, you want to starve them a little bit just to get full range. You want to hit a four cost with your Gadatsu, right? You want to hit a Luchi. You want to hit a... Um, you know, Kuzan, if they drop a Kuzan, that would be ideal to, to hit that. Anything like that, you want to be able to carry with your Gadatsu early on, then you do have to start attacking at some point, right? Now, I'll have to try to... It's hard to explain this matchup, guys. It really depends on board state. Because here's the idea. You actually do have to attack into them, or they start dropping Sabos, Borsalinos, Rebecca's, Manchuries. They just start recycling everything. So if you don't keep up with them on the board, you're not going to be able to outlast, outlast them consistently. You might be able to outlast them every now and then, but consistently I think it becomes an issue without changing or modifying your deck severely. Because that's another thing you have to understand with, with uh, the way that this deck is um, built right now. It's built so that it can, so that it can compete against all of the, the major three decks out right now, that, which is NL, Purple Luffy, and Blue Black Sakazuki. So if you change the deck too much, all of a sudden, you you can no longer beat Purple Luffy. Like, it, it becomes almost impossible. So, you know, and we'll have to see. Maybe things will change in the future, but currently, it, it just is what it is. If you guys have some some ideas, the, please post it in the comment section below, because I'm always trying to make this list better and better and better. But I will tell you this, guys, I'm very happy where the list is at. All right, so let me keep going. Uh, Mid-game, go for board, like I was saying. Early starve to build up your board. Then mid-game, take out what you can of their board. Borsalino and Tin Lin, they're kind of the MVP. They just, they, they get you there. Sabo's nice as well, getting some some dead cards out of your hand, like late game pair of sparrows and things like that. Borsalino, we, we know what he does. Tinlin, we know what they do. Definitely use as many of your trigger cards as you can, right? You want to, I don't want to say you, you aggressively take life against Sakazuki, but you do need to take some life to start getting your triggers rolling. And so you keep a, a healthy hand size. Last but not least is 200 million volts of Mario. I'm a little mixed on this in the current version of the deck because yes, it is very good. But guess what? If this card was another card that I'm, I'm going to talk about later, I would have won the game against Sakazuki. If this 200 million volts of Maru was a Thunderbolt, all of a sudden, I would have beaten Sakazuki. Uh, and I probably I probably could have won the whole tournament because just going back to the list here, 
like I said, the Blue Black Sakazuki player got second place because after they beat me, they went against an Anel player, not the same one, obviously. They went up against an Anel, and the Anel player beat them. And I beat an Anel in my next matchup, an Anel player who I would argue was better than the one who won first place, like as far as like skill-wise goes. So again, it's, it's hard to say. Everything depends on the dice roll kind of thing, you know, or at least sometimes with, with what kind of cards are drawn. So anyway, and, and I'm not trying to discredit anyone. I'm just trying to say I, I wish I had the foresight and, and gone with this. Because another reason why Thunderbolt, I think, is, so, is, is kind of a little bit better than this is think about what I was just saying about Purple Luffy. Purple Luffy has nothing but five-cost blockers. Okay? It's like, you know, Queen and Kid. And and even, even um, I think even Polly's a five-cost, right? Because it's, it's a five and then pay two and he'll ramp a Dawn and KO a four or less. I, I think it's something like that. Whatever the case is, that, like Thunderbolt just gives you a larger range. It's searchable by your uh, by your puddings, you know, because it's Big Mom Pirates, and it has that trigger to just annihilate something, even a Borsalino from the trigger, right? So I think that is the direction I'm going to go with it. But 200 million volts tomorrow is still very strong. I'll probably still run as a one or a two of still in the deck because it does allow you to get around Borsalino and a lot of the four cost blockers. Okay, last up is uh, my Anel matchup, 50-50 here, I would say. So like I was saying, notice how close these slides are. They're very, very close. I would say Sakazuki is probably a 45-55 matchup, realistically. Like, I, I try to say these things without bias, guys. I'm really not trying to, to lie to anyone. I'm trying to be as realistic as I can. I think Sakazuki is slightly favored into us with this version of the deck. Now, if you have nothing but Sakazuki players in your current, uh, like in, in your area... You probably want to run the more um, attrition style of Black Yellow Lin Lin because you'll probably get a lot of mileage out of it. You know, it's where you build a little bit taller, so that way you have more removal, bigger characters for them to deal with, more you know things like Yamato. I'm not even running Yamato in this list, guys, because I'm trying to be able to deal with Purple Loopy. So anyway, um, let's keep going. The, the Anel matchup though is, is definitely I think 50-50, just right down the middle. Now, the, the more aggressive Anel list is probably a little bit harder for us to deal with, probably more along the lines of 45-55, but the standard Anel list that you would normally see, it's about 50-50. It might be slightly, slightly favored for us, actually. Early game, you're going to have to starve them, you know, a little bit and build up, and then mid-game, you just eat up the board as much as you can. And then to win the game, you drop Tinlin because they have no, <clears throat> excuse me, they don't have access to Tinlin. And then your leader, I have the leader down here at the bottom right, just absolutely eats up their life, eats up their hand, eats up the board, <clears throat> excuse me, and it cycles you through all the dead cards in your hand. The leader is what really wins us the matchup against Anel, because, and I've heard people say, you know, like, well, Anel gets the leader's effect for free. Not really, because I can let Anel sit at one life all game, and they are not doing anything with their leader effect. If you put me at one life with, with my character, or excuse me, with, with um, Black, Yellow, Charlotte, Linlin, I am going to swing seven and gain a life at the same time while trashing a card in my hand that's dead with no counter and, and cycling through a life card, potentially getting another trigger. It's, it's, and I, I understand it's very close. You know, Anel lets you do that at zero life, right, where you go down to zero and gain a life. <clears throat> but here's the thing. After they lose that life at zero, <clears throat> excuse me, guys, after they lose that life at zero, now they have to get it back through other means like, like uh, Katakuri or Yamato. So that's where I think Black, Yellow, Lin, Lin just kind of is able to beat up an L. I think it just has a better late game attrition engine built into the leader. And yeah, it, it, and, and we can run Black, or Black, Yellow, Lin, Lin can run Tin, Lin. It's just that simple for me. So good stuff there. So here is the list, guys. This is the list that I ran last night. Um, let me just run through it real quick. Four Pudding, four Parasparo, three Lin, Lin, four Charlotte, uh, well, three, three, seven Lin, four Tin, Lin. Two, uh, 200, million, million, two, 200 million volt Amaru, excuse me. Uh, four Strusen, four Amandi, uh, four Gang Beige. I did swap over to Beige. Four Sanji, four Smoothie. This can be Cracker. There's barely a difference, but I will talk about this in a second. Three Gadatsu, two Kuzan, two Borsalino, two Sabo, two Sakazuki, two Six King Pistol. It's like a, it's like a 10 card uh, black engine and then 40 cards yellow. So the reason for the Struson and the Amandi, uh, number one, Struson. I did play Struson um, last last night in the tournament, and I think I tossed out a, uh, a smoothie from hand to KO a, uh, a baby five against Rosinante. So that that was pretty nice. I'm not going to lie to you. Very, very nice. Um, Amandi, I don't really play often. 
but I think it does have, a, again, it does, I think I actually used this against the blue-green player as well, the, the Rosinante, where I played this later in the game and tapped down one of their characters. I could be wrong, I can't remember, but just, it, this can even tap down like a sugar, right? Like, it, it does have some value there, very solid. Uh, so these 2k counters are great, and of course beige. I never get beige when I need it, unfortunately, like, you know, going back to the Sakazuki game, it sure would have been nice on the last turn when he went through three of my life cards, or maybe it was two of my life cards. It sure would, yeah, yeah, it was two, excuse me. When he went through two of my life cards, it sure would have been nice if just one of those was a beige, because I would have won the game in that case as well. Or a Sanji, you know, stuff like that. And it happens. I'm not trying to complain too much, guys. I'm sorry. Um, four pudding, four pair of sparrow. This is solid for the three, the three seven lin and the four ten lin. That's just perfect. I have, I think I have 30 targets that I can hit for, for pudding. Or, or, well, you know, 30 and then minus the four puddings. So about 26. And then pair of sparrow, because of the Sanji's, I think he also has 26 that he can hit because he can also hit himself. Um, like I said, smoothie can be cracker if you want. Sakazuki was excellent. He just kind of always... Even, I mean, I think there there was a game where I even played him just as a 6 cost 7k. Like, I, I don't think I got the KO effect because there was because he had the... I think it was against the Sakazuki. I think he had a uh, Borsalino down and I needed to keep tempo on the board. And I think I just played him outright. I could be wrong about that. I, I can't remember perfectly. But the card is just excellent. Uh, Kuzan, unfortunately, I needed this to be anything except Kuzan last night. That was another situation. So against the Sakazuki, my 200 million volts of Maru could not hit his Sabos. If this Kuzan was even a great eruption, which would have, you know, one cost, lowered the Sabo so I could swing for game and win the game, or if it was like, even if it was like a Hina, like three costs, 5k Hina, that could minus four. Again, I think that could have won me the game. And there was not a single game where Kuzan was like this extremely good factor. Like, it, there, there was no way Kuzan was this factor that like won me a game, if that makes sense, um, unfortunately. And the same thing with 200 million volts of Mario. Like, these cards were almost exclusively pitch cards for my leader each game because they there was never a good opportunity to play them and I never felt like I wanted to play them. Um, <clears throat> now, yeah, yes, I still won. You know, I, won, I went 3-1. I won three games, but still, I, I think if this Kuzan was something different, something that would support 200 million volts of Maru, or even if it was just um, a, a Thunderbolt, then I would have been in a position to win the, the, the one game that I lost, and it would not have affected the games that I won. That's just my own personal opinion. Uh, so y'all tell me what y'all think in the comment section below, uh, below about the list. Moving forward, I always like to talk about what to, what to do going forward. Uh, I took off the black-yellow leader like I usually do because it fits better sometimes when you take the leader off. Um, keeping the four Struce in, the four Pudding, four Beige, four Amandi. Uh, this could be Satori. Capone Gang Beige could be Satori. It's up to you. Or maybe go two and two or something. I don't know. It, it depends. But I like the four Amandi and the four Struce in because Pudding and Parasparo can search them. It gives them one extra target they can hit when, when, you, uh, when they do their searches. Four Amandi's good. Four Parasparo. I'm going up to three Borsalino. Um, the four smoothie, it, I'm going to be running this because of what's directly under it. Like the, the smoothie, the Thunderbolt, and the 200 million volts of Maru. I have that set up to where that's probably going to be a way that I can hopefully win games, you know, in, hopefully make it a way where I can win in the late game, you know, more consistently and catch people off guard. Because all of a sudden... You know, if I have a Thunderbolt in hand, say I'm at two life, I'm saying, if I'm at two life and my opponent's getting low, and if I have a smoothie on the board or a Thunderbolt in hand and a 200 million volts of Maru in hand, like one of these and then 200 million volts of Maru, all of a sudden I can lose one life, take out something they have, and just get through what I need to. And I, and I think that could be very, very powerful. Uh, four Saji still staying. Uh, two Saba was good. Three Gadatsu, two Sakazuki, three Charlotte Linlin, seven cost, four Charlotte Linlin, ten cost, going down to one six King Pistol, and then the rest you kind of see. The rest is uh, self-explanatory. The two Thunderbolts and the two hundred million volts of Maru. We already kind of talked about that. So ultimately, what I did in this list is I got rid of both Kuzans for two Thunderbolts, um, and then I'm trying to see. I can't even really see what I, what I... Oh, I took out one Six King Pistol for... Sorry, guys. I'm, like, drawing a blank right now. Did I? I'm, I'm trying to see what I changed out. <clears throat> oh, for, for the one extra Kuzan. Or the one extra Borsalino. That's what it was. So I took out both Kuzans 
for two um, th two Thunderbolts, and I took out one 16 pistol for one Borsalino. So this is the direction I'll be taking the list here soon. I'm going to be testing. Um, I'm very happy with the list. Let me let me just say that I'm very happy with it. I think it it, it has a chance to win against every matchup. All all of the current big three, right? You know, uh, Purple Luffy, NL, and um, Sakazuki. So. So yeah, that's about it, guys. Um, that's it for me ram rambling. Yeah, that's the last slide. So please tell me what y'all think in the comment section below. Um, have y'all? Has anyone else been playing Black, Yellow, Linlin? I'm always curious to see what your list is. Any comments, any suggestions, please post them below. And uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And until next time, guys, peace.